So, Evan, we've got you on the line. we got to talk to you a little bit about this stuff. I would love to, to kind of throw a few questions your way about kind of what it, <laughs> what it is that you do and what, what I would say a lot of the people, especially, you know, the, the kind of people that follow a show like All About Android, uh, but definitely Android enthusiasts, people who are really tuned into new, the Android news uh, and just de device news in general on the Internet, what they know your name for, whether they know Evan Blast or whether they know Evleaks, they probably have seen a lot of your work online because so many of these hardware leaks that we hear about on a weekly basis, I mean, man, your name is attached to so much of this stuff. And uh, it's, it's just kind of crazy. So it's awesome to get you, uh, get you on and have the chance to kind of ask you a few questions. I was thinking maybe from a little bit more of a behind the scenes perspective, as opposed to the leaks themselves. We'll maybe talk about those a little bit later. Um, but one thing that I, and, and feel free to like say, like, I can't answer this because I completely understand that in the world of, of kind of leaks, like you are being trusted uh, with this information and to protect you know, the people that are giving you this information. So I get it. If any of this stuff, you know, kind of crosses that line, just let us know. No comment. We'll move forward. It's not a problem. Uh, but first things first, how how exactly do you establish connections that entrust you with this kind of information? I have to imagine this is something that doesn't just happen, but it takes a lot of time. How did that work for you? No comment. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I've been in this industry, you know, for... Over 10 years now, I started at Engadget, and I moved on to Pocket Now. And um, you know, just in the in the course of your job, when you're involved with technology and you know reporting on this stuff on a daily basis, you meet people, keep in touch with them, um, build up trust. And um, you know, especially when I started leaking, quote unquote, professionally, uh, it was um, it sort of snowballed where. You know, the, the more my name got out there, the more people would get in touch with me. And it's a, a double-edged sword because you, you also get a lot more attempts to hoax you that way. Mm -hmm. So it's important that, you know, you're really judicious. And I've been fooled a couple times, you know, and, and some people will be quick to point that out. Um, but I've been lucky that, um, you know, especially in the last couple of years, I've, I've had a lot of people approach me as opposed to just having to rely on connections that I made myself throughout my career. So suddenly at, at a, there's, there's kind of like a critical, uh, you know, critical turning point where instead of you having to kind of seek these things out, you're already well known for being a, a good source for this type of stuff. And now people know that they can trust you with that information, trust that you'll uh, perhaps disseminate that information in a responsible way without calling any attention to who actually gave you that information, all that kind of stuff. Interesting stuff. Uh, what what would you say, um, where, do, where exactly does that trust come from? Is that just because people have, you know, the people who have this information have seen you over however many years giving this information and uh, they just feel like, okay, well, of, of all the people that I could reach out to with this information, this is the person, the, the one person that I think could do something responsible with it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I try to present myself professionally, um, even though it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's just leaking. Some people sort of see it as, you know, something fun, uh, you know, not really uh, something someone would do as an occupation, but I've always, you know, looked at it like a job. I have a responsibility to both people I'm getting information from and people on disseminating information too. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'd like to think that that shines through and that, you know, you see that, that if you do give me information, you know, it's gonna be presented responsibly. Um, I'm going to vet it. I'm not going to say anything extraneous about it um, regarding any sources or so. Yeah, I mean, what you said is, is the longer history you have uh, of doing this and and doing it with, you know, some degree of, um, of I'm not sure the word I'm looking for, um, judiciousness that um, people will, will see that and be comfortable with you. Hmm. Um, what, uh, what percentage of these, of, of this kind of information that comes to you, would you say is anonymous, as in like out of nowhere, somebody that you've never been in touch with 
gives you this information, and maybe maybe percentage is the wrong question. That isn't really at the core of what I'm asking. But how do you how do you take this this suddenly anonymous information and get to the point of thinking, okay, I realize this is a source that I'm not used to taking information from, but I trust the information and I'm willing to go kind of public with what I've been given. How do you make that determination? Well, first of all, I, I try to be transparent when it comes to at least that very basic fact of something is an anonymous tip and, you know, well, I wouldn't report on it on VentureBeat. Um, right. But if I'm going to put it up as a leak, I, you know, I just had something this week where I got something that was an anonymous tip in, and that was the first thing I said about it. So, you know, the the images look accurate enough. You know, it seems like it's these are professional renders. You know, having been around a while, you know that that it's it's hard to create uh, professional looking renders. It's far from impossible, and and plenty of people do it. And I've been tricked by it in the past. So, um, I I present that information as, hey, here's something I got. But I'm not putting, you know, my name behind it. I didn't get this from someone I know. And, you know, that that informs my and it should inform your level of confidence sure. in this leak. Sure. But um, do I, the I, companies that you work with have they ever like come after you and been like, When did you leak that? Who's your person? <laughs> Tell me everything. <laughs> it's rare, but I've been contacted, yeah. Yeah, I have to imagine. Do you think there's a, a layer of, of uh, and this, by the way, comes from our chat room, JJ in the chat room has a, a really great question that involves kind of the marketing influence of leaks because, you know, it, it, sometimes it's hard, it's hard to know whether a leak is, you know, a leak just Planted. based on, oh, I just happen to have this information that people want to know and I'm just doing, you know, a good guy leaker dear thing to Evan. give this to Evan. Yes, dear Evan, because for whatever random reason, you know, people might want to know this. I versus, have a thing for you, wink, wink, <laughs> wink, wink. Versus like He's a company that actually has a vested interest <laughs> in leaking something. I mean, the only, the only example that I can think of just as the last time that I wondered this is, you know, Google had its Google Home announcement at Google oh, I.O. Yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And then what do you know, a few days later, source leaks that Apple is working on, you know, AI for the Apple TV, blah, leak, blah. I was like, wow, you know, the timing too. is really, really right for this leak to happen. I mean, how much do you think there is uh, kind of marketer involvement in, in the kind of d dissemination of leaks? Um, I will say this, that, that controlled leaks, they do exist. Mm -hmm. And, and that's probably all I'm going to say about that. All right. Fair enough. Um, do, uh, let's see here. Have you ever regretted publishing uh, a, a leak? Like maybe you, you moved too soon. I know you said that, you know, you don't always get it right. The majority of the time you have, but there are a couple of times where it, it hasn't worked. And to be honest, I'm surprised that there aren't more for anyone that kind of releases this information because you never truly know. Uh, you know, the, the answer when you're, when you're going public with something. Um, but have you ever regretted publishing a leak in the past? Yeah. Um, I mean, the easy answer to that is, is anything I've gotten wrong, I've regretted. <laughs> but uh, above and beyond that, I would say that, that there have been times where I think that I've published information too early. Got it. That it, it wasn't respectful of the, of the companies who's, you know, because behind every leak and, and every product that's put out there, there are teams of people that are working on this stuff and, and they're working hard to keep it a secret and to, to, to you know, micromanage the, the dissemination of that information and the, um, the, the revealing and the launch of that product very closely. And um, it, can, it can be damaging to a company in, in more ways than just hurting people's feelings. Mm -hmm. So I feel like information that's put out there too early um yeah you know people like to know about it but it i i don't necessarily feel good at you know at the end of the day if it's if it's too far out there so i try to avoid that yeah sure do you have any like favorite leaks or like <laughs> a favorite leak story that like resulted in something amazing happening afterwards <laughs> um I think one of my favorite leaks was, um, and, and this is sort of timely, not not this past year's um, Uncarrier event, which um, which just happened um, on Monday, but the one um, not the prior free pizza to that, event. Was, I'm sorry. Not the free pizza event. 
<laughs> no, the the one called Binge On. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah. I had I, I didn't write an article on it. I just um, put some information on it about it on Twitter, and um, it happened to be accurate. And um, to their credit, T-Mobile really ran with it, and they um, they ended up mentioning me in a little skit that they did live <laughs> at the event. Nice. I suppose so. that's that's kind of the ultimate uh, nod is when a company that you've leaked their information actually kind of kind of realizes like this is just kind of part of the 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 playing field and. I don't know, but they had they they, they risk. A, I mean, there is a level of risk here, you know, that can actually affect their sales uh, when it comes to leaks of devices, you know, ahead. Uh, kind of like what you were talking about earlier, Evan, about just leaking things that are on their roadmap that can, you know, dramatically yeah. affect the sales of their current uh, lineup. Well, so I was going to ask Evan. I don't know if you want to like maybe list off like one or two reasons why a company maybe wouldn't want their leak to come out, um, you know, just for the audience at home. Well, one of the reasons is what you just said, that um, if if a leak happens, if there's too much time between between a leak and, and an intended product coming out, that's a lot of people, it gives a lot of people time to change their buying habits. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in companies don't care if like maybe there's like a week that goes by where they sell a couple less because they're going to make up all those sales you know when the next product comes out but if it's like a month or two months where there's a lull in sales it's it doesn't equate to you know you want a bird in hand is, is you know worth two in the bush you want those sales to happen now for this quarter not for them to get loaded into the, the next quarter when you have another device coming out yeah so that's definitely one reason um, and the other reason is that, or that I can think of, is that um, you're, the longer uh, time period between leak and uh, launch, it gives competitors time to retool their own roadmaps. So if you know uh, a product from one company uh, is rumored to have a certain feature that your next product doesn't have, and you have time to make the changes, you very well might. And I've actually seen that happen a couple times. So any, any specific post. example for that? I don't. I don't know if you you can disclose that, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to talk about that specifically. Understandable, <laughs> understandable. Um, I think that's good. It's like, that's it's, my I question. I have to be anyways. quite honest. It's very hard to talk about <laughs> leaks because they're supposed to be very secretive. Well, I know. And it's very hard to ask the you know to ask questions around this because as a journalist, it's a leak. Right. Well, it's a secret, like that came out, and you know, I, I can either choose to write about it or not based on kind of the validity of what the leak is. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever feel like there's a little bit of competition now with leaking on the internet, at least in the tech sector? Because I noticed there's a lot of other accounts out there who are, you know, kind of doing the same thing. Yeah, and a lot of them are XX leaks. You ever noticed that? Yes. Um, I don't know who started that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's there is some competition in a way because, and there's not in other ways. I mean, yeah, you know, once someone leaks one device, uh, you know, it, it's out there. But there's many aspects to to any given story, and just because there's a picture out there doesn't mean the specs are out there. Just because the picture and the specs are out there doesn't mean that the release date is out there or that the brand name is out there. So. Rarely does anyone have all the information, and there's usually a lot for, for people to pick from. For sure. And then, uh, as we've seen sometimes in past Google announcements, you practically know everything before the announcement happens. So it's like the event happens, and then people are, like, disappointed because they already knew the information. And they're like, wait a minute, there was nothing new here. Uh, so I guess it, it goes both ways, you know. It's it's like uh, people are... are thirsty because they want to know they want to be on the cutting edge of of information and to know kind of what's around the corner and everything but it kind of takes the winds out the wind out of the sails uh when the official announcement happens and i'm sure that is the uh, that's the plight of of marketing you know when it comes to yeah. uh these companies yeah it's just part of the landscape